Hi, my name is Charles, and I serve here at Transformation Church as one of the executive pastors. And I wanna take a moment before we jump into the message, just to say thank you, first of all, for watching. It means the world to us that you would be a part, no matter where you're watching from, no matter who you are, I'm believing that this message is gonna encourage your faith and hopefully transform your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you take a moment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, not for us, but really for you. We wanna be a resource to encourage your faith and be with you on this journey of following Jesus. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the message today. I hope it blesses you. Welcome to week six of a series we're calling, somebody shout at me, Fresh Fruit. Fresh fruit. Say it with faith, fresh, fresh Fruit. How many people that's your desire this year? You, you want fresh fruit. I don't want nothing stale, nothing old. In my marriage, in my life, I want fresh fruit. And we've been talking about being connected to the true vine. What's his name? Jesus. Okay. Staying connected and, and making sure that the gardener can come in and give us a fresh cut. And if he wants to prune us, we're not going to run from it. We're going to know that he is the one that is giving us a future because he's cutting the things off that would hinder our growth in the future. And so for anybody, I just want a little caveat, for anybody that's feeling like loss means that you're losing, that's a lie. When God is cutting on you, loss actually means that you're about to level up. You missed it. He said there's more fruit coming. I know it feels bare right now, but whatever you think you lost, check back with me in a different season. And I will have, somebody say leveled up. <laughs> And last week, I felt a burden um, to begin to talk to our church about something that is just a part of the culture around here. It's just a regular thing, and I don't know what church everybody came from and how people talked about um, this certain topic, but when it comes to Transformation Church, it's regular. We talk about generosity, stewardship, and finances, and usually, if you're in this church this year, I usually do a six-week series on um, generosity and giving and um, how to properly steward finances. Because the top three things we counsel about is relationships, money, and anger. Like the results of all those things. And so people need to know about it, but don't nobody want to talk about it. Come on, let's be honest. When it comes to money, everybody's booty get tight, everybody's lips get chapped, everybody start thinking about what they don't have. And I'm telling everybody, relax. I'm not teaching you something from a place of needing something. And I want to I say that to you because in a lot of churches, it's like, oh, we're going to talk about money today. Lock the doors. <laughs> like, <laughs> this building has been getting built for 59 years, and today we finishing it. Like, it's not, we're not doing that. Because many times, if there's pressure or compulsion or emotionalism, you don't give with the right, watch this, heart. And giving is all about the heart. And some of your biggest problems and all the things you're managing is not because you're doing everything wrong. You're just doing this one thing wrong. You're not doing everything wrong. You're doing this one thing wrong. You're not putting God first in your finances. A lot of my issues was I was just not putting God first in my finances. I thought it could be a part of the list not the priority of my list. And some of you have convinced yourself, well, nobody know my financial situation. Me and God got a deal in an arrangement and we're going to do our thing. He know my heart. He does. That's why he told me to speak this message. Because you're delusional. And you want God to bless you with more of what he can't trust you with now. Because everybody going to be generous when they hit the lottery. Oh, when this job come through, when I got more, and God said, that's not even how the principle works. If you're not faithful with little, he cannot make you a ruler over much. And today, can I be, can I be completely hot, humble, open, and transparent? Can I be? Okay. I said, can I be completely hot, humble, open, and transparent? Okay. When, when many ministers of the gospel who look like me preach about money, there's some ulterior motive behind it. And I want to apologize for anybody that's been in those environments. 
And it's not just black people. It's people whose heart has been toward, turned towards manipulation. And, and my team will tell you, like, I've been intentional about this since the day that I became the lead pastor of the church because it turned so many people off from finding out about Jesus because they always like, Jesus, the church just want my money. The church just want my money. And I was like, man, if we could ever become a church that was like, the church just don't want my money, the church be giving a bunch of money. The church actually changes the community. The church is actually going into downtown Tulsa and finding black-owned shoe stores and buying the whole store for people and then taking it to the boys' home for young men that don't have parents and giving them sneak Like, I, oh, we're going into, it says take care of the widows and the orphans, so we're going into actual homes where these young ladies have aged out of programs and we're buying houses for them and actually hold on there are people with wheelchairs and special needs and we're buying kitted out like vans and like and for nine years we've been doing that I can stand here today, and the reason I'm just trying, this ain't for everybody. Most of y'all know, but there's like 3% of people that are watching this like, I'm not listening to anything you're saying because you're just going to use this to take my money. No, 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 no. I'm trying to let you know that we're going to be generous as a church no matter what you do. What I want you to do is know that you may be missing out on the very thing that adds abundance to your life. We partnered with the Pando app and went into the jails and gave them transformation. Do you know we get hundreds of letters every single week from people in prisons all across America because Transformation Church has literally helped them become men and women that they would have never been without the word of God. Y'all can give it up for that, y'all. This is huge. In the last nine years, we've given away over $12 million. Man, I can't mess with y'all. I'm going to find the exact number and tell you tomorrow. It's been way over that, but I was being Tammy looking at me. She said, it's been way over that. I'm, I'm trying to be conservative because we always err on the side of being conservative so you don't think that this is a hype train. The reason I'm saying all of this because I'm trying to ease somebody's tension to think that this is a place that wants to take anything from you. I really want to give you this principle because it changed my life from being a poverty-minded world in this head. And it brought me into a vast place of abundance. And as your pastor, I want that for every person under the sound of my voice. I'm not talking about everybody making the, sound, the same amount of money. I'm talking about everybody living in abundance. There are people with millions of dollars who still have poverty mindsets. And there are people who work at a fast food restaurant making minimum wage that live in abundance. This is not about a dollar amount. It is about a heart position. And today, church, I want to give you a principle that has transformed my life. It's changed me. Last week, we talked about having fresh seed. And I know some of y'all been sowing seeds everywhere. Y'all been like, where? I'm going everywhere to sow seeds. And, and, and there was something funny that happened this week. My daughters like popcorn a lot. And so I went to make my daughter some popcorn. And I don't really be thinking what popcorn is. I, I mean... I, I literally like get the little brown sack. I don't even think about what's in here. And then I just put it in the microwave. But for some reason I was talking and I was doing like this and I was talking and I felt something moving in there. And for the first time in my life, it connect. I was today years old. <laughs> when I realized what was in these packages, it's a bunch of what? Y'all got a whole revelation at the microwave. I took these seeds and I laid it out in the microwave and I put it, hold on, let me, here, let me put this in here right. I put it in the microwave and then I hit the little double pump button and I was sitting here, you know me, I, they tell you don't stand too close to the microwave, <laughs> but I've always been a little rebellious. 
And so I'm looking in there and I'm watching this and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, Michael, when you take seeds and you put them in a process that allows them to be uncomfortable for a season. I said, Holy Spirit, don't do me like this on a Tuesday in front of this microwave. He said, my people don't see the expanded version of their seed because they won't get uncomfortable for a short season. They won't change their budget for a short season. They won't stop buying the sales shoot. They don't stop visiting Bath and Body Works. You know that is a setup. They always going to have a sale. And you keep walking past that same thing. And you got all of this stored in cabinets, but nothing expanding. He said, Michael, if you would take the seeds I've given you and just for a moment, put them in an uncomfortable position. He said, you'll start to hear the change of what's on the inside beginning to expand and make a little noise. So I was literally sitting here watching this popcorn expand. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear a little bit? She said, no, check your ears. (laughs) If you were closer you would hear individual seeds expanding. It caused a reaction that then caused another seed to say, well, maybe I need to expand too. It's not just one seed doing the expanding. It is the conglomerate of all of these seeds being uncomfortable for a short season that makes everything around it, everybody shout at me, expand. And I read this script, ooh. Hold on, even when it came out, if you could feel this, it's still popping. Dang, this is hot. And after I did this little experiment making some popcorn for one of my kids, the Holy Spirit said, Michael, I want transformation to sow some seed. And I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, you're believing God off the vision I gave you 37 days into being a pastor, this whole thing that the, the Spirit Bank Event Center would be transformation church. He said, go back to that and look at all the stuff I said. And one of the things he said is that this arena will be filled three times over every weekend. And I said, what? I don't even know if I want that, Lord. <laughs> He said, this is not about what you want. It's about what I want. And he said, remember when it comes to seeds, some plant, some water, but God adds the what? He said, I want Transformation Church to sow with that model. And I'm like, what you mean? He said, find a church that's about to plant and sow some seed. And I literally saw a church. It's Life Point Church Phoenix. TJ and um, your beautiful wife who just moved to Phoenix, Transformation Church is sowing some seed right now, and we're sending you a check for $100,000 before you have your first interest meeting. Transformation Church, can we give God? Hold on. Can we give God? Life Church Phoenix, we got some popcorn on the way for you. I didn't have to pray about that. I didn't have to fast about that. Why? Because when God spoke it, the resources of this house are not mine. So if he wants to do something, it's very easy to obey him because it was his in the first place. My question is, is that the same for your house? Because the same exact thing we just did there, that happens to me and Natalie to the tune of whatever he says. I'm talking about before church, I wrote a check. It doesn't matter about the amount. Mo, am I telling the truth? I wrote a check before church because he said to. Can we talk about something else, Lord? 
Can we, no, I, y'all, every time I start talking about finances, it costs me. I'm not, no, y'all know, I'm not, I'm being for real, for real. This is not about the church. I want the principle to be so in you that God can tap on your shoulder at any moment and he say that extra McDouble. See, y'all thought it had to be a lot. That extra McDouble, go give it to that man. Well, Lord, you know I eat two McDoubles and two chicken sandwiches. That's the pattern of prosperity. Like, <laughs> but the only reason you grieve is because you thought it was yours. The only reason you get frustrated is because you thought it was... I got some more popcorn here. Y'all think we should pop some more popcorn? Let me just put the, some more seed off in here. I wonder who that's for. Uh, let's... When it expands, when my seed expands, it makes everything around me get bigger. That bag was flat when it went in. But because it was put in the right environment, it didn't just expand the seed, it expanded the bag too. You want your world to get bigger? You might want to plant some more seeds. Proverbs eleven twenty four. the world of the generous gets Larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets what smaller Today I want to talk to you about a foundational principle that made my world get larger and more than my world my heart Be more turned towards the idea of God and I'm gonna be straight out with you this this one thing exposed my heart it helped me solidify my priorities and it honestly helped me defeat pornography I, I, I know I know some of y'all want to stay in the same cycles but this was a this was a game changer for me and the principle is tithing I'm not gonna sugarcoat it I'm not gonna taking 10% of all of my increase and before I pay everything else, before I make the house, the shoes, the outfit, my kids' sporting events, before I make that a priority, I said, God, I want you to be the foundation of my life. So I'm going to trust first things first. And I'm going to take this holy portion of this resource that you gave me, and I'm going to put it into the house of God you've called me to. And I want everybody to hear me. If your house of God that God's called you to is not Transformation Church, take your tithe to the place that God has assigned you in this season. If you're watching this as supplemental content and we're encouraging you, do not send your tithe here. Go to First Baptist yippity doo da that you go to. I'm just trying to be very clear for you. And you're supposed to sow right there. If, if everybody does what they're supposed to do in the garden they're planted in, the entire kingdom grows. And y'all see, this is how you know this is not about me. I could be trying to manipulate and use our influence to get more people. You should talk to the place who's feeding you. You should tie to the place where God's called you. Okay, uh, let me quit. Let me quit. In the kingdom of God, tithing is the foundation of our finances. So it's always tripped me out that people try to give offerings when they haven't tithed. The offering is illegal without the tithe. Oh, I can't even mess with you. Is it beeping? I feel like one of those, uh, like, uh, the people from uh, Blue's Clues. What was his name? Uh, Steve? Is it BB? Let's see. Some plant. Life Point Church in Phoenix is about to plant. I think their interest meeting is this week. Some. That means that would be a church that's already going. And they just need a little water on top. This is hot. Wow. Um, somebody text um, uh, a couple that is in Seattle. Um, One Church Seattle, there's a check for $100,000 coming to you right now. 
We just wanted to water a little bit the seeds of God that you are spreading in Seattle. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't stop. It's so crazy. I'm, this is exposing some people's heart because some of y'all don't know the scripture that says you rejoice with those who rejoice. How would you act if somebody just texts you that your business organization or nonprofit got a hundred thousand dollars unexpectedly? Brother Phil Moore, God sees what you're doing, sees what you and your wife are doing. Send them this bag of popcorn. Should we pop some more? No, no, y'all not going to be focused. Y'all just going to be looking at this the whole time. So hold on. In the kingdom of God, it's so crazy that that when generosity starts, you don't know whose name is on the next bag. (laughs) Pop it! In the kingdom of God, tithing is the foundation of our finances. I want to tell something to everybody that, that really helped me understand. If you don't do what's required, what you do that seems like excess is denied. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay. Um, if, you, if you don't do what's... It's like, it's like um, qualifying for a track meet. It's like we're going to state, but to run at state, you got to actually hit this time in the regional meet. And people be showing up to state stretching. (laughs) This is what we do in church. And it's like, what are you doing? I'm about to smoke these fools. I'm about to run this race and I'm going to win. It's like the truth of the matter is you could run this race and win. But because you didn't qualify... Because you put the energy and effort into the extra thing, the exciting thing, the thing that everybody sees, and you didn't do what was required, your ability gets trapped in your neglect. The ability that you could be the fastest person there gets trapped because you neglected to do the ordinary thing. That's what I think so many times when it comes to our tithe and offering we do as a church. We think we're tipping God. The church was good today. Let me throw a 20 in there. Good job. But you are 14 years backed up on the requirement. (laughs) You bought car after car. House after house, put the mat out that says blessed. And then you come to church, judge, don't serve, talk about it. And then when you feel really good, you tip him. I just want you to see honestly how we approach. And God said like, yo, Mike, I just need you to tell people that they can have a, watch this, is the title of my message, a fresh foundation. A fresh foundation. This is all about tithing and honoring God first. And, and, and let me help somebody, because some of y'all, the 14-year backlog, you just got depressed right there. You was like, I can never, I will never be able to go back and like, stop. His grace and mercy is new every morning, okay? So, so somebody's like, oh my, hey, oh glory. Like I saw you. <laughs> what I'm saying today though is, could today be the day that it be said that you change your family's generational future? Because as a single woman or a single man or a, a couple with, with not a lot of finances or you balling out of control and your financial advisor doesn't think that this is wise. Oh, I'm talking about real stuff. 
See, when you start talking to people who have money, they'll try to convince you that you should honor God in a different way at a different time of year because at this time the taxes will be able to. I had to tell my financial people, shut up. The only reason you have a job, y'all don't, y'all don't hear me. I know it would be better for me fiscally, but it won't be better for my faith. So what I need you to do is 10% of everything that increases in my household, send it to Transformation Church. Well, Pastor, um, Mr. Todd, I completely understand the heart behind. No, you don't. Because you weren't there when me and Natalie lived in Bishop's rent house. Being in 700 square feet using borrowed couches. Y'all know them couches that are like pleather? Y'all know the brown ones. Why are they all brown? They're all brown. They only make them in brown. If you're hot, you get stuck to them and like, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know. If you still had a couch, I'm praying that you get a fresh foundation. Hear what I'm saying to you. You weren't there when we were believing God to change our financial situation and God said, I'm not going to give you more. I'm going to give you more wisdom to manage what you have. And today as a church, I don't care if the world gets this. This is not a principle for the world. This is a principle for people who call themselves sons and daughters of Christ. Tithing is an ordinary principle of children of God. And if you don't, watch this, you're not going to hell. See, this is what we try to do. We try to scare people into actually doing what's right. Your salvation can be completely intact and you still not get the full benefit of the full life Christ had for you on earth. I know, I, know, I know this message with you is like, am I a bad person? You're not a bad person. You're not. You just have not taken advantage of the full benefit of living a life with Jesus Christ as you're. Watch this. Everybody say, Lord. Okay. So that's why Matthew 6, 19 says, don't store up for yourself treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths rust cannot destroy them and thieves do not break in and steal. Watch this. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Write it down in a point. Your finances expose your heart and your heart exposes your foundation. People come up to me all the time when I do series, series on finances and stuff like that, and they're like, Jesus is first in my life, Pastor. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, there's something about the nature. And, 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 and you know, I'm, I'm trying to be very relationally intelligent and think about them and, and all that other stuff, but inside, I just want to say, prove it. You can say anything, but prove it. And the thing that I found out is the proof is in the fruit. When it comes to Jesus being your foundation, show me your checking account. Show me your your Chase Bank statement. Jesus, I'll do anything for Jesus. Show me your last year's money statement. Because I can tell without you saying any... No, no, shut up. Mm -mm. And what people start doing is explaining why other things, well, I mean, the house, you know what I'm saying? We got it in a bad season, and then the interest rate was at, like, but then, I mean, it was my daughter's 16th birthday, so we had to buy her a car because I told her she was going to buy her a car. And then, oh, that was, that was a trip to Miami, and now, I mean, oh, me and the guys, we had a good time in Miami. So I mean, it was my 40th birthday, and I had, and they, but he's my foundation. Wherever your treasure not will be, Where your treasure currently is, it exposes where your heart is. Many of us, our heart is in our house. Some of us, our heart is in makeup and fashion. Some of us, come on, I want you to think about it. Where is your treasure? Locate your treasure right now. I don't care how much treasure you have, where is it? 
Some of y'all tre treasure is sitting on 24s. You always wanted a truck riding on them things, and so now you're sitting up high. But it's that. Some of your treasure is in your kids' sports. Some of your treasure is in stocks, bonds, I, I, Bitcoin, Jesus. It's it. I mean, some of your treasures are in NFTs and technology. Some of your, like, where's your, tre my question is, is any of your treasure designated first for God's house? And if it's not today, I'm not coming to beat you up. I'm coming to offer you a fresh foundation. See, because this is what happens with a foundation. Most of us build our foundation on things that can't really hold us up. I'm 225 pounds. That's a miracle in itself. But if I want to build my life on this, I don't know if a career can hold the weight of my life. And many of us, let's be honest, this is why you go to college, this is why you take that program, this is why you do this, because you about to build your life. Uh-oh. That don't even feel, a one leg don't even feel. Y'all see how that's bending in? <laughs> Somebody say, don't do it. But you do it every year. And you're encouraging your kids to do it. No, -uh, you're going to college. Hold on, wait. Hold on, why, why are you telling me? Because you got to get a good career to build. Ooh, yeah, that doesn't. And so many of us, we build it on the career. And then we'd be like, yeah, once I get a good career, then... I can actually take and put my relationships. That's the only way she don't want to go to Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> so I got to get that money so then I can find a dime piece. Oh, no, no. Why is it a racial concern? Because it's what? It's not stable, yet we build our families on this. Oh this is how, how, in the, how in the world do I put the children that God trusted me with? Like I'm building this on something that can't hold me up. And then I'm going to put, on, if I'm just building on a career, ain't no other room for nobody even on this box. Yet I'm gonna get me, a, I'm gonna get shorty, and we're gonna be doing vacations, and, and we're gonna. I'm just practicing. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to. And we going around trying to convince people if they get a good job and they have a decent relationship. They got a strong foundation. And then what they do is they be like, yo, matter of fact, now I got a little money. I got to turn it into something. I got to become a podcaster. I got to be an entrepreneur. Ooh. It feels like, she said center it. Okay, what do I need to go? This way? Is it this way? A little more back? Over to the left? It's so crazy that you'll have people from the outside telling you how to actually position what still can't hold you up. You can tell me to move it forward, move it backwards, move it over, 10x my company, move it to this, take an offshore account. You can tell me to do all of that. But if I needed to stand on this, it's still gonna fall. And do you know how many people, instead of walking in a blessing, are balancing? Spend their whole life 
winds start blowing, economies start doing stuff, it's like, oh shoot, we're about to die. Because <laughs> they built their life on the wrong. What kind of dad would I be to tell Ava or Bella or Gia to come up here and stand on this? This is what we're doing generationally. Hey, look at me. Our people came here. We were slaves. And I worked hard so that you could have a better future. So you go to college. And you get this, that, and the third, the fourth. And if you turn that into a good relationship, and then you better get a boss too. Don't marry no little housewife, little, little. You better get you a boss. Real estate, marketing, taxes. No, I'm telling you real conversations that happen with people. So then y'all can... All that sacrifice I did is so that y'all... But praise God. We love Jesus. And we give him the glory on Sundays. But Monday through Saturday? It's about this career. And, and in relation... You don't even have to have a good marriage. It's a business relationship. Y'all know how many people are together just because? They say it like this, it's cheaper to keep her. Y'all don't, oh. Well, we work for it and she gonna take half and then, nah, 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 I'll just, nah. And your kid's sitting there watching generational dysfunction form right in front of them. But what if? What if? What if we built our life on something that was a solid, sure right here, foundation. I mean, what if I built my life? What's his name on? What happens is now I get to rearrange all the areas in my life. If Jesus is my foundation, if, if I, if I commit, submit, and make him a priority, what he says, how he does it a priority, then I can be like, okay, what can I build? Oh yeah, I can build, yeah, my finances on Jesus. And then I can build my relationship on Jesus. And then I can build my, why nobody's screaming now? Cause I'm standing on something sure. Nobody's scared from me because I built my life on something that had the capacity to hold me up. Now listen, now listen, I'll still be standing if the career falls and if the relationship fades <laughs> and if the finances go, I'm still solid on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I build my faith on Jesus. And this is the reason why so many people get hurt and run away. Because they think Jesus forsook them. And he said, no, you just built your life on something that couldn't hold you. Today, I'm, I'm offering you a fresh foundation. Hey, Ava, come here. Come here, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Okay. Um, the, the beautiful thing about this moment right here is it's very simple, and this is why I want you to get this principle of giving, because it's very simple for me to teach my children to trust something I've already stood on. Come here. Oop, jump. Yeah. It's, 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 I want you to see all she's going to know is a family that builds their life on. Jesus. Bring Gigi. Gigi, come here. Come here. Just bring my baby. Look, we can, we can actually sit down on this. Come on, let's sit down. Come on. Ooh. Yeah. We don't got a lot of finances and all of our relationships won't be great. But uh, I want, uh, come here. But as long as we have 
Jesus. Come here, Gigi, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yep. It feels like um. It feels like this is what men of God should do. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Is lead their family first. I'm not saying none of these other things aren't important. I'm just saying, could we build the foundation? Cause, cause one day I'll be gone. I'll stay right there. One day I'll be out of the picture. Yeah, keep them on the screen. And right now, they're not scared. Because the foundation that their life was built on was strong enough to hold them even when daddy was gone. Oh my God. I want, I want you to see that if we don't teach our children to build their life. Mom and daddy, why are we moving? Because we got we to gotta, we gotta take care of our money a little better. Are we poor? No, we're not poor. We're pruning. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to get together as a family. We're going to play Uno. No, no, no. We don't need all the technology right now. We're going we're gonna to draw in together right now, and we're going to be close because one day we're going to look back on these moments, and it'll be the best time of our lives. And, and, and what, what I'm trying to teach you is to build your life on Jesus. When Jesus asks you to give up relationships, finances, career, ideas, things, I want you to know that it's worth it because he can actually hold it. My whole family can fit on this solid foundation. And, and I don't want to exacerbate this analogy, but I just want to let you know, like, we're not leaving a good playbook for our children to follow right now. Like when I look at how people are frantic around their resources, we're teaching them. You say, I didn't, I didn't teach them. Yes, you did, because some things are taught. Other things are caught. They're catching the spirit of fear around finances. They're catching the spirit of poor stewardship. They're catching, I thought you said we was cutting back. And then y'all at Olive Garden buying uh, extra drinks and desserts. Y'all know you rich when you get desserts. Like y'all know, y'all know when appetizers and desserts are happening, it's like somebody got paid. <laughs> they're, they're catching the spirits. And, and could it be said that maybe there should be some new ideas and identity? Thank y'all. Can y'all give it up for my babies? They did a great job. They didn't know I was going to call them up. Maybe there can be some, some ways. She got it. She, all right, take this one. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe we need to build our foundation on, say his name one more time. Jesus. Okay. All right. So let's go. Jesus is the only firm foundation. 1 Corinthians 3.10, because of God's grace to me. Somebody say, his grace to me. <laughs> I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation, foundation other than the one we already have laid, Jesus Christ. You want to know who the foundation of anybody who believes is? It's right here. What's his name? Jesus Christ. So, so today I just hope to give you um, an undoing of probably one of the, the most manipulated scriptures in the world about tithing. It's Malachi 3. And I want to give you a revelation that transformed my life. I'm going to give it to you, and then we're going to go home, okay? I forgot I got one more... Uh, Somebody said the popcorn. Do y'all see how fun it is? Do y'all see how fun it is to actually steward over your resources in one season so you can be a blessing to other people in a different season? Like, you not getting blessed, but you happy. Boop, boop. Beep, boom. All right, here we go. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord. I do not change. That is very important for you to understand. Who's talking? The Lord. And what does he say? I don't change. Okay. Therefore, you are not consumed. Verse 7. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances. That word ordinance means ordinary teaching. The OGs used to do this. It was ordinary. 
And now you new school people have gone away from the ordinary things that we did and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Who's talking? He, he keeps telling you who's talking. Just so you know, a preacher didn't make this up. This is not a minister. This is not a preacher. This is not a minor prophet or a major prophet. This, he says, the Lord of hosts is saying this to you. He says, but you'll say, in what way shall we return? I thought we was with you, God. I thought we was in the tabernacles all the time. I thought we'd go to church. I thought we'd sing Yahweh. I thought we was with you. And he says, will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. Lord, that is not even funny. You know I wouldn't rob you. How could I? This is what it says. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? His response, in tithes and offerings. He said, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Think about our nation. Prayer out of school, coming against churches' ability to have nonprofits. It's like our nation has turned their back. On the money, it says, in God we trust. That's words. It's not in our hearts. Even this whole nation. He said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. And the storehouse represents the church or the places that God chooses to dwell. And it says that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Who's talking? He keeps telling you, this me. This is not Pastor Mike. This is not Pastor whoever you think. The Lord of hosts is saying this. He says, Try me at this. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. Watch this. Now, most people, when they get right here, they get stuck because there's two things in this scripture that jack everybody up. How am I robbing God? And I'm cursed. I, how? Me, little old me. I make $22,000 a year. I'm robbing God and I'm cursed. People are like, ah, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with that. This is the revelation that God showed me. He said, Michael, people read these words and don't feel my spirit in it. He says, how does a man rob God? He said, I don't need your money. He said, this is just the requirement to bring you into another level of blessing. So a good dad wants to bless his kids, but he blesses them based on their obedience. So if I tell you to make your bed, but you take out the trash and didn't make your bed, I can't bless you the way I want to. Not because you didn't do something. You didn't do what I asked you to do. All I need you to do is obey me. Somebody say obey. And so all of this is, and God said, you keep robbing me. Watch this. This is the revelation that God gave me about five years ago. It changed everything. When you don't tithe, you rob God of the opportunity to bless you. He's like, oh, I'm about to, God, you didn't do, Uh uh-oh, popcorn. It feels like it's done. Some plant, some water, but God adds the? We heard about this church in Atlanta that God has been expanding. It's called Spirit and Truth Atlanta. Pastor Mark Moore, there's a check for $100,000. Oh, how you gonna rejoice? There's a check for $100,000 to take what you're doing to the next level and increase you. Somebody give God some praise. What is hot? Send them some popcorn. Y'all know the only reason we're able to do that? Is because when it's time for my check to come in and your check to come in on the 1st and the 15th, I don't even think about it no more. It's gone. When I look at my stuff, it's after God got his. This is worth adjusting your life for because when you don't tithe, you rob God of the opportunity to bless 
you. You got to hear what, y'all, I'm a living, when I went from poverty mindset, hiding dollars in my mattress, keeping money stashed just in case I run out. And God said, boy, if you don't give up that Egypt mentality, if you don't stop acting like a slave, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I will make you the lender and not the borrower. I... But I had to break it by honoring God. Watch this, by faith. It's not going to make sense. It's going to make a miracle. You have to start tithing by. How do you get saved? How are you going to get saved by faith? Worship a God by faith that you've never seen. But then when it comes to money, it needs to, the math need to be mathing. What I'm saying is it's by. Okay, I'm, and everybody's not going to get it. But I believe there's at least a thousand of y'all. That's about to change the foundation of your life. Watch this. When you don't tithe, you rob God of the opportunity to bless you, okay? So that's how you rob him. Everybody, I'm cursed. Let me help you. You're not cursed. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. So, 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 so when he was telling this, this was in the Old Testament. Jesus hadn't come yet. So he said, you curse with a curse right now. Enters Jesus. When Jesus enters in, he says, you are no longer cursed if you don't tithe. That means you can be saved, you can be delivered, you can work in healings and miracles. But when it comes to your finances, you're not cursed, you put a cap. Somebody say, I'm not cursed. I just got a cap. I wrote it out because I want everybody to hear this and see this very clearly, okay? If you don't tithe and you believe in Jesus, you're not cursed. However, some blessings have terms and conditions. No, I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And God was like, yeah, until you follow my terms and conditions... I cannot trust you with that level of resource because all money actually does is magnify who you really are. You a cheater without money, you become a really, really good cheater with money. You a liar without money, you become, do y'all hear what I'm saying right now? He's saying, all I want you to do right now is honor the terms and conditions and somebody's saying, well, Pastor Mike, that's Old Testament. I'm going to show you Jesus saying you should tithe in the New Testament. In red, Luke 11, 42. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe on mint and rue and herbs and neglect justice and love of God. These you have ought to have done without neglecting the others. He's saying you should give love, mercy, justice, peace. You should do that. And you should tithe on all your increase. The way Jesus even put this bothered me at the beginning because I was like, you should have just said it. Just say tithe. My people tithe. And then it could have just been over. But he said, Michael, the reason that I coded the language because it's a test. He said, they got to trust me. And this is a test. Tithing is a test. I said, but God, you could have just made it really, 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 really clear. He said, I did. He said, you tithe on stuff that don't matter. And you won't tithe on the stuff that is really my heart. The reason he said it, he said, this is ordinary. We just tithe. 10% is set aside for God. What does that mean for my finances? That he's going to have to take care of them? What does it mean for my vacation that I might not take one this year? What does that mean for my wardrobe? Wear it again. No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you. 
This doesn't become something that you do if you do not adjust your life. And most people want the blessing without adjusting their life. I didn't lose weight by eating the same thing that I ate to get there, to get smaller. I didn't go sit down and watch movies to get the transformation. I had to change what I was doing. And too many people when it comes to finances, generosity, we won't change what we're doing. And so the Holy Spirit said, Michael, I just want you to offer the people a fresh foundation. And this is what I found. 90% with God's blessing is better than 100% without it. And for anybody that's struggling with Malachi 3, I did a whole message on it in a different series. I want you to go. But God told me not to go super deep into this financial thing. He said, because my people don't need a revelation. He said, they've matured enough. They just need a reminder. Some of y'all just need a reminder. You got off. The holidays was crazy. Some different things happened. You got hit with some stuff. And God said, today we're going to give you a fresh foundation. Malachi 3 is not a weapon. It's wisdom. He's saying, honor me, honor me, honor me. God, what I got for you, you ain't even ready for. Think about the language God said. He's done some pretty wild things. Splitting seas, like letting ravens be the first Uber Eats. He's like done all kinds of really good things. And he says, test me. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven. What does a window of heaven look like? Like, think about, like, think of that. Like, like think of your windows. Like, think of your windows. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven. And then gets gangster and says, and I'll pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. <gasps> when you don't have enough room to keep it all, it means you have to. He said, you tithe. I'm going to bless you so much that you got to sow. You got to sow. Y'all. If I, could just, if I could just transfer the level of assurance I have in you and having God into you when it comes to this, I'm a living witness, not because I'm a pastor. It's because I got the principle. And I want this for every person that at least calls Transformation Church your spiritual home. We are supposed to change the world, not just through prayer. God, dog. Oh, Lord, I'm going to need a whole series. Lord, tell me when I can do it. Some stuff I shouldn't have to pray about. I should just be able to meet the need. But if you're always in need, you can never meet. the. Need. I don't pray God provide for me anymore. I pray God show me who to provide for. I'm not... And see, you up there in a purple suit. What is that, velvet? I, hey, you over here, and you talking, and you saying, and I, I, know what, I know what the enemy's telling you. He's taking your money. He's stealing you. God bless me outside of here. God told me to write a book, and I obeyed him. And when I wrote that book, it changed my life. They just told me their relationship goals just got put in French. I can't speak one word, but I'm going to Paris with the book. <laughs> Y'all don't, Mo, you already know. I'm going to Paris. I, I, he said, you got it, Mike. They just called me this week and told me they starting filming on Relationship Golden Movie in June. Y'all missed it. I, I can't play with y'all. I, I'm talking about Amazon is making the movie right now. He said, you don't have to know how I'm about to bless you. But if you honor me as your foundation, I'll call it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'll allow you to find income from places you didn't even know were available to you. The reason they called me is they said, because I told them at the beginning, I said, number one, I want to make a movie movie. Okay. I'm trying to prepare my church right now for, for, the, for the backlash, okay? <laughs> We're making a real movie. Not the Christian, like, I'm going after the lost. 
I want them to be watching rom-coms and find relationship goals, and I want it to be real to them where they're at. It's baked. Okay. You can't clean a fish you ain't caught. So I'm not making this movie for church people. I, let me bring the camera. I'm not making relationship goals the movie for you. I want to cast it into the sea where people never come to this church. And, but one of the stipulations is that we would be a part of the movie. Like it wouldn't be based on the book. And then so they're going to come here and shoot scenes at Transformation Church with all the people. Now, I'm telling you all that so y'all don't act wild. I'm telling you now, months in advance, because there are going to be people like real actors. Like if I start naming them, you'd be like, oh, my God. Yes, it's a real it's a movie movie. She said Denzel, not Denzel. You're married, ma'am. Sit down. Not Denzel. Denzel was out of the budget. Maybe on the next. Maybe, but if anybody know Denzel, you know what I'm saying? The internet is a powerful thing. If anybody know Denzel, relationship goes to the movie. <laughs> it's only crazy. Y'all know how. Huh? Anyway, but currently to the budget, he is not. What the point I'm making is when I decided to tithe, there were already blessings God had that he couldn't reveal to me because if he would have revealed them, that would have been the motivation. And remember, giving is all about the, he says, you can't know what I have up here because if you knew that you, everybody would do that. That don't take, that would take somebody who don't believe in God would. Yes, that makes sense. Tithing is a two-way test. And I love this because you grow up like, don't question God. Don't, don't, don't. First off, he can handle all your questions. He is big enough to handle all the stuff that people can't answer. And he's not obligated to tell you until you get to heaven. But he is big enough to handle it. But this is one of the only places it deliberately says, test me. And many people don't know this that are believers that every time you get paid, you take a test. Whom will you honor with your finances? Every time that check comes direct deposit and the first thing that goes out is who you honor. And most of us honor the mortgage company, honor the car, com the, the car company, for that car that really was a self-esteem boost because of the insecurity we actually had on the inside of us. And we thought if we drove that name brand, it would make us feel better. But we found out it gets dirty and dusty like every other car. And now this payment is crushing me. But it is not that bad that I would swallow my pride and turn that sign into a Honda. I'm talking about real stuff, y'all. Some of the stuff we don't need to pray about, we just need to make a decision to honor God with it. Malachi 3.10, try me, test me. He says, see if I won't do so much more, but you got to make me your foundation. Hey, uh, Charles, Will, Scott, come here real quick. Last analogy, we're going home. Um, let's say I'm going on a trip and... Um, I'm going to be gone for an extended period of time. Y'all come right here. I'm going to come be gone for an extended period of time. And um, I want to provide for Natalie, my wife. And um, I'm taking care of her, but I want to provide some extra finances just in case she gets in a spot. Um, and I'm going to give each one of y'all $10,000 every... Hold on. It's just an example. Okay? Just an example. Scott, calm down. <laughs> I'm going to provide $10,000 extra for her through all of you. And all I want you to do is give her $1,000 each time I send you the $10,000. The other nine, you can keep. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But I just want to give you um, that money, okay? And what if I talk to my wife every night? What's up, baby? How you doing? Oh, I miss you. Caking. 
Y'all remember Kaken? Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking to her, and I'm like, hey, you remember those finances that um, I was going to have Charles and uh, Will and Scott give to you? How's it been going? And she's like, yeah, so um, Charles sends $1,000 every 1st and 15th, like clockwork. It's like $1,000, $1,000, like it just keeps coming. I'm like, okay, that bet. I said, what about Will? Will, for some reason, sends 2000 I was like, what? I was like, I just told him to send 1000 I know, but every 1st and 15th, he sends 2000 And it's just been consistent all over. And I was like, okay, so what about the thief? I mean, what about Scott? <laughs> and he said, well, let's, let's talk about Scott for a second. She said, the first time he sent 700 The second time he sent five. And this last month, he didn't send anything. And I say, what? <laughs> Scott didn't send nothing this last month? She said, nothing. I said, but I gave him... The ten thousand dollars. What? The other, the other nine is yeah, yeah. his. Yeah. But why? What? Oh, he spent it on them shoes. Them shoes is shine. <laughs> shoes is shining. No. This is just an example. Okay, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Who would I stop sending resources to? Not, watch this, not because he's a bad person. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's because he didn't do what I asked to right. be done right. with the resources. Right. Right. And if you don't believe that's real, go study the parable of the talents. Yeah. Yeah. Where God literally took from the one who did not do what he asked him to do. Yeah. And he gave it to the ones who weren't. Now listen, listen to me. This is an example of me trying to provide for my bride. Right. Yeah. But Jesus calls the church his bride and he set up a system that his wife would always have wealth and resources to be able to bless people and when we don't do with our resources what he's given us the ability to do it is he that gives us the ability to produce wealth you're working that job but he's the one that's giving you the activity of your limbs the breath in your life the ability to have your right mind it's him and he's saying you won't even take care of my wife i can't send no more seed to the one who won't so could it be said that tithing may be more personal to Jesus than we think? Would everybody stand? Hebrews 7. It says, here mortal men receive tithes, but there, it's talking about in heaven, he, Jesus, receives them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. H hear what I'm saying. At whatever church you go to, if you're watching this online and Transformation Nation, wherever you're at, if you give here, I, I need everybody to hear me and everybody don't stop moving yet. It's like, I got it, Pastor. I'm tithing. I'm no, calm down. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going to restore hope into you. I want, I want you to hear what I'm saying. However you give by passing buckets or plates or you send it online or all that other stuff, all I'm asking everybody to do is make God the foundation of your life. Not just in words, but in action. How do I do that? The tithe. If you work at McDonald's and your check is $578, how much is the tithe? $57.80. Not You don't got to round it up. It's blessed at the mark of the 10%. And I think the reason he did that is because it's fair to everybody. If you make 300,000 or you make 300, it's one penny on every dime. Church, I want to unlock us. And I believe today is going to be a fresh foundation for so many people under the sound of my voice. I cannot wait to hear the testimonies of the fruit. Somebody shouted me fruit <laughs> of making God your fresh foundation. 
And this is, I have to say this, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Some of you are saying, I make a lot of money. Do you know how much money my tithe is? This is not everybody, but I'm talking to a small group of people. Because you, if you started actually tithing, it'd be enough to buy some cars and some houses. And some land and some investments. And God says, I can change this if you want me to. I can change the dynamic of you having so much that your tithe looks like somebody's income. It reminds me a story in the Bible where the man of God realized that the people weren't tithing. I think it was Hezekiah. And he realized that he was reading scriptures and found out that tithing was before the law. It was during the law and it was after the law. And he realized that his, his land, the people he was leading was under a curse because they didn't tithe. And so he made a decree that all of, all of the people should bring 10% to the house of God, whether that was a fruit or grain, whatever they had, the increase of their house, they were to bring 10%. He went away and came back and he looked and it was so much there as the 10% he said are the people okay this is so much and the people reported back to him and this is what I believe is gonna happen for transformation nation he said oh this is just the 10% if you think this is a lot go see the 90 that the people are living in somebody should just clap right there by faith there's gonna be a turnaround in your finances in your mindset and a fresh foundation. We're not looking to our job or career. We're looking to Jehovah Jireh, our provider. If you want a fresh foundation in the area of finances and make a fresh commitment to tithing to whatever house of God that he's called you to, would you just lift your hands? Now, listen, before you lift your hands, this is not, nobody's taking a screenshot to hold you accountable. Nobody, I'm just talking about the desire. I don't know how it's going to happen right now. I got to go back and crunch a bunch of, I got the captain crunch these numbers. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't, but if you have the desire, I want you to lift your hands in this place. Come on. Father, I'm praying in the authority that you've given me. And I thank you, Father God, that just as you broke the spirit of poverty, lack, and low thinking over my life, I thank you for the people that you've called to this house and those, Father, who have the faith to connect with this word. I thank you that you would start a transformation on the inside of every person under the sound of my voice that would change generational relationships with finance forever. God, I thank you that they would see you as the source of their life. That the job is a resource that the entrepreneur endeavor is a resource, that the, that the thing that everybody's getting into, right, that's just a resource, but you are our source, God. And we decide to build our life on a sure foundation. God, I thank you for wisdom right now for every person under the sound of my voice that you're going to show them the areas that need, they need to be intentional to make a transformation in this one area of tithing. And God, I thank you for longevity, commitment, and I thank you for the blessing. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing they don't have room enough to receive. Thank you that our minds are changed because we have a fresh foundation by honoring you. Where our treasure is, our heart would be. And Father, we are telling you our treasure will always be found in your heart, in your house. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Right there in this same moment before we go, there's some people that they need a heart transfusion. <laughs> you can't believe God for your finances because you've never given them your life. And right now, if you're in this room and you've never given Jesus your life, today I want to offer you the most amazing opportunity. It will redeem you from the curse. From every curse, the curse of your families, the curses of people, you got to get under the wisdom, the life of Jesus. Today it changed me. I can stand as a testimony from a liar, manipulator, addicted to pornography, had all kinds of crazy things in my heart, and it changed me not to a perfect man, but a progressing man, a man who is standing firm on the foundation of Jesus. Today I want to offer you that. If you're sick of running, you're tired, you're weary, come to Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. I need the church to begin to pray. 
because somebody's soul is in the balance right now. Tomorrow's not promised, but we got this moment right here. And I believe that God's been drawing you all week. Even if you're watching online, somebody brought you. I'm telling you, this is your moment right now to receive Jesus. I don't care what you will lose. You will gain way more. You want fruit in your life? Make Jesus the foundation of your faith. On the count of three, if that's you and you want to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, I don't care how old you are, I want you to lift your hand. One, you're making the greatest decision you've ever made. Two, I'm proud of you, but your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Three, shoot it up. Strong, proud. I see you, my brother. I see a whole row. I see you. Glory to God. Oh, Transformation Church, I see you. Glory to God. Husband and wife. Thank you, Lord. Online, just, just go ahead and put your hand up in the chat. Glory to God. Hey. At TC, we're a family. We're all going to lift our hands and pray this. Somebody say, God, God thank you thank for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I give you my life and make you my fresh foundation. Thank you for living the life I couldn't live and changing my life. Renew me and transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. All over this place, can we give God a shout of praise? Oh, come on. Can we celebrate people who just gave their life to Jesus? Hey, I want to take a moment again before we jump off and say thank you. Our church is not built on one individual, but on the sacrifice of so many. And you being a part, it means the world. So thanks for watching the message. I also want to say thank you to the thousands of people around the world who are generous. It means the world. And we are able to represent, we're able to be generous, to meet the needs of people because of your giving. If you haven't taken the step to give, trust me, there is no pressure at all. But if you feel led, you can text the word GIVE to 828282 82 or you can go online. When we partner together, God uses our generosity to make a difference. Again, if you haven't, take a moment to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And like we always say, go out and live a transformed life.